Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements mirror image tutorial, we'll be doing this inspirational poster. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you click on the subscribe button and also click the like for this video. If you want to learn more about Photoshop Elements and how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at the links in the description for my complete Photoshop Elements training titles. Okay, let's get to it. The construction of this Photoshop Elements mirror image is really pretty straightforward. I just took a sunset picture and then did the mirror image, put in some ripples down here for interest, and then of course we put the text on top with some text effects. Alright, let's see how this whole process is handled. Let's close that out of the way. There we go. So here's the original picture, and there's a link for downloading this picture in the description. Now the first thing I want to do here is to fix the horizon. Notice that our horizon line is crooked in there. If I pull a guideline down, you can see there that it's against the horizon here and it's off down here. So we need to straighten that out. And we'll use the straighten tool for doing that. Let me just go to that guideline. And that's right down here, bottom left hand corner. Right now I'm using Photoshop Elements 15. Earlier versions have the tool in different spots. And it's a fairly recent tool. If you don't have this tool I'll show you. You can do this manually as well. Now before we do that, let's just make a copy of our background layer. Let's drag it up there. Here's our copy and I'll close out the background, hide the background. I always do this just out of a habit, so in case I change anything I can always go back to my original which is right here inside of the file. So good habit to be in. Okay, using the straighten tool, we'll click on that and Notice here it says rotate all layers. That's frequently selected. And it's up to you if you want to do that or not. I'm going to uncheck that so that my original again stays untouched. Okay, now just click on the left hand side right there at the edge of the horizon. And then drag straight across. Click on the right hand side right at that edge. And then Photoshop Elements rotates the picture so that that is now horizontal. Notice how the image is a little bit too small now. We can adjust that, simply drag the corner out. I'll pull the bottom right corner out just a little bit, and then the upper left corner out just a little bit until the picture fits. And there we go, that's taken care of. So as you can see, real easy with the straighten tool. I'm just going to hide this layer. It's just one more time. This time I'll do it in a manual manner without using the straighten tool. And again, you can see here, there's the horizon. It's kind of off. Now you do this by bringing down a guideline. Put your guideline right into the middle so that the midpoint right here is right where that horizon line crosses. And then you'll have to just rotate the image manually. So go up here to Image, come down to Rotate, and then you want to rotate your layer right here, Free Rotate Layer. Click on that, and now you can bring the cursor just outside of any of our little control handles here. Grab a control handle, and then you can actually spin the image that way, and then simply spin it until you see that horizon lined up, which is right up there. It's only off by about 1.2 degrees. Choose OK, and there it is. So it's, as you can see, very easy to do this manually if you don't happen to have that straightened tool. Okay, let's just get rid of that layer now. I no longer need that. And back to our fixed layer. There we are. And we can get rid of that guideline as well. We're done with that guideline. Let's just clear our guides. Okay, that's step one. Step two is we need to make a copy of this layer right there. There we go. And then we need to do a mirror image of this, which is flipping it directly up and down. Not rotating, but just a direct up and down flip. That is, though, in the same place. Image, Rotate, and it's right down here, Flip Layer, Vertical. Just like that. There we go. Okay, now we have the layer flipped. And see it's kind of on top up here. We need to make a layer mask which shows us just the sky portion of this image. So go over to the Rectangular Marquee tool and have the feathering set at zero on this one. And then come just outside the bottom left corner, 
and drag this up and then come just a little ways into that ocean water down there. We'll be using that ocean water to kind of give us the effect of a horizon line in the back. So just a little ways in, not much, very, very small amount. Once you have that selection made, simply click on the layer mask button and that then gives you a layer mask which shows just that bottom part. Okay, now you can pull this layer down and then position it right where you want it, just a little bit in there. There we go. There's the nice mirror image on that one. Now you can use your cursor key if you need to to kind of just fine tune that position. So there's the actual horizon line happening in there. I want just a little bit so we have some horizon to focus on. And there we go, there's the mirror image. Now let's take this a step further and put some ripples into the bottom down here so that it looks like it's actually water instead of just being a mirror image like this. So let's go up to the top layer. This one is the, the water effect layer down here. And we'll put in a filter. We're doing a distortion filter because we're distorting the image. And the one you want is right at the very, very bottom down there. It's called zigzag. That's a fairly old filter. You can see here it has the old style. It isn't part of the filter gallery. And there are several options in here around center, out from center, and pond ripples. Set this at out from center. You can see there's your kind of a representation of what it's going to be looking like. We can zoom out here and, and see if we can get an idea of how this will be affecting the image right here. Now you want the amount being pretty high. I'm going to pull this way up. You see, as I pull it up, we get more distortions happening in there. And I have mine set actually at 90, so I'll just type in 90. And the number of ridges in here, number of waves, is handled by the bottom control. And I'll just type this in. I have mine set at 16. Let's get this kind of a nice wavy effect in there. Choose OK. And there's the ripple effect. Now notice up here I have a little bit of distortion happening right on that horizon line. If you want to clean that off, that's easy to do at this point. We can just zoom in there and fix that. Or you can use your cursor keys and just lower that down a little bit. There you go. Or you can come in and actually adjust the layer mask or even trim off a little bit of that horizon line. It's really up to you if you want to leave this in or take it out. The other way to take it out would be just to make a selection like this right down along that horizon line and then hit the delete key and that deletes out that top little bit and then just go ahead and deselect. So again, it's up to you if you want to have that in there or not. It's it's personal preference. I kind of like mine out. But again, it, sometimes it looks nice. Depends upon the final finish on your image if you want to have it in there or not. Don't worry about the strange look over here on the layer. Since everything is looking fine on our picture, that's perfect. Okay, that takes care of the background pretty much. I want to give this bottom, though, a little more of a feeling of being water instead of just a mirror. So let's make a change on this, just a slight change. We're still on that one layer here. And we'll just put a color overlay on top of this and give it just a slight color shift. So there's our layer. Let's go up here to the Layer menu, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and Photo Filter. Now where it says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, make sure that's selected. Choose OK. And you can see here, if I show and hide this effect, how we can give a different cast, color cast, to that part by putting this filter on top. Now I don't want warmer. The one I want is just a blue, which is right down here. And this gives it just a little bit of a bluish tint, a little bit darker, just enough so it gives it more of an effect of being a reflection instead of a perfect mirror, perfect copy. So having just a slight color shift on that helps to sell the concept actually that it is a reflection instead of just being a duplicate, a flipped duplicate. All right, so there we go, that takes care of that. Now, we're all set to put in our lettering. And we'll do that with a combined new layer, 
combining these three layers here into a new layer so we can then work with that layer to make some additional adjustments and controls. Now to do this, it's a special keyboard shortcut. It's the Control, Shift, and Alt keys all held down at the same time, and then tap the E key. And what that does is it merges all of these visible layers up to a brand new layer right there. I can now hide these layers, and you see the whole thing is now combined onto this one layer. This will make it very easy for us for our next little step. So we're a bit dark in here. Not really exactly where I want this. So take this layer and copy this up here to a new layer so you have two copies of the exact same thing. Now we can blend the top layer into the bottom layer, make some adjustments on the top layer, and use this to control the values of our overall picture. Go up here to the blend mode, and I'll set this at screen. You see what happens is automatically it just goes a lot lighter. This is one of those techniques for lightening of a picture is to duplicate the picture and then screen the picture. Really useful if you have a dark photo, but it's too much as you can see here. So you can tone down this lightening effect by changing the opacity. Let's bring this one down. What I used on mine was 51% on the opacity. And there it goes. There it is, original picture, and here it is with the 51% screen on top. It just lightens the whole image up real nicely. I like doing it this way instead of lightening up with the levels control, which I normally use for doing that kind of adjustment, because it gives us a little different effect on this. Okay, there is the background image. Let's now put our text on top of this. And for this, I'm going to set the color down here for our text. Go to our type tool right there. And then come down here to the color. Click on color. And we have our RGB colors across the top here. Have our grayscale in here. And then these are the CMYK colors. These are your printing colors. Notice that they're just a little bit duller than your RGB colors. That's what actually happens is when you print, if you printed these colors out on a regular printer, they would come out looking like this down here. But that's fine. What I want is this one right here, which is a CMYK blue. Click on that. There we go. Double click. There's CMYK blue. Now the typeface I used is called Berlin Sans FB Bold. And it's a real large size to fit onto this page in here. And when I came up with what I finally used here to fit was 1260 points. So real large. Hit the enter key there. Now to get this one, I actually put it in at about 100 point and then just dragged it to find the right size. But that's the finished size that I used. Now I have this set on center. That way you can come into the center of your page, click in the center of your page for your insertion point, and it will then spread out to both sides. And let's go ahead and type in DREAM. And we're all caps. Came out a little large, as you can see, so I'll do a little tweak on the side. Just grab the corner here, and let's pull this down just a bit until we get a nice large fit on this. And then the positioning. I'm putting it so that the lettering is just about centered in the page. It's not exactly centered, it's just about centered. And the horizon is kind of coming into the bottom edges down there on that text. And choose OK. So there we are. We now need to blend this into the background. I want to have the background actually inside of the letters. Several ways of doing that. We'll just do it with blending modes, which makes it real easy to do. So let's go up here to our blend modes. And we'll come down, and the one that I used down here is the soft light mode, and that's right there. And that just blends it in uh, right there. It just kind of blends it into the picture. You see a picture through it. We have kind of a combination of the color of the letters and the picture in behind the letters, just blending that in. Of course, it's hard to see that. It kind of drops into the background a bit too much. So we'll need to put in some layer style adjustments here to help bring the letters back out again and make them a bit more visible. So that's layer. Come down to layer style, style settings. And even though the light source is actually right in the middle there, I'm going to pretend it's up here for the sake of our lettering. So let's change the layer or the lighting angle over here to about 135 or so. There we go, 135. You could just type that in if you want to. And let's give this a drop shadow to help show our 
bottom right side of this, so drop shadow. And I'll bring our drop shadow up to 10. And as you can see, it's real hard to see in there. I can't really see that. We need to bring our distance out. As I bring the distance out, there you go. There you can see the shadow now coming out. So I'll set that to 33. And set the opacity in here to 100%. So it's real strong. We'll adjust that down as needed based upon our next adjustment in here. And that's going to be a glow. There we go. We want the outer glow. And this will put a glow outside of the letters. And because of the glow, it's actually going to be dimming down the dark shadow as well. Kind of does two things for us. Now to see the glow, let's bring our opacity up and I'll put it up to 65 percent it's about two-thirds of the way up and then we need to increase the size you can see right there there's the glow happening and notice as the glow comes up that dark shadow begins to disappear so that's why we brought in so dark is because the glow is going to be coming up on top of the shadow even though it's down below in our list here it actually comes in on top of the drop shadow so the size that I went for here was 111 pixels, just like that, and choose OK. And there it is. So as you can see, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do this one, but it gives a real nice inspirational poster effect. Let's just see how this looks full size. I'll just drag it up here, and we'll zoom in a little bit, and there we go. So there's the dream inspirational poster with, of course, that mirror image effect in the background. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.